So how do I move programs in and out of my virtual machine? Um, so this can certainly be a challenge, um, really just kind of dealing with the, the mechanism of the system. So the software was designed to be its own standalone sandbox. And because of that, we work everything through this, this virtual SD card, right? So when I click this little icon right here in the upper hand corner, it gives me a virtual card. Now my programs um, are stored under user, Cinemaric data, and I can have a prog folder, and this can be my external memory. So that path, that user Cinemaric data and prog, that is gonna be the direct path of our NC Extend or our local drive, depending on how your system's commissioned, right? That's the data here. So I can move things in and out. The problem is once I've shut this machine down, that folder no longer ceases to exist. Um, and I always have to launch it all the time using my SD card. You can map to that um, and give yourself a shortcut. I have done that in the past, um, but I do have to have the machine running for me to get access to that folder. Once I shut it down, that, that, mapped, that mapped shortcut is not gonna be valid anymore. So what I like to do is I like to create a shared button right here in Program Manager that allows me to transfer files in and out. So that's what I'm about to show you how do I set this up? And it's really not too bad, but keeping in mind that my virtual machine, again, is designed to be a, a machine emulator. So the process we're gonna go through would really be a very similar process to what we would do on a real machine. So for me to create a shared folder, in this case, I'm gonna share with just a folder that's outside on my PC, I'm gonna have to go in and create this function. So what you do, is you're gonna to go to menu select, upper right hand corner button. We're gonna to go to setup. And now what we're gonna do is we wanna to go to HMI. Now, before I go to HMI, I have to pay attention to my access level. Currently I'm sitting at access level zero. It doesn't matter which of the four access levels I choose from my selector knob, none of these are gonna give me sufficient permission to create logical drives, and which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to go to HMI and we're trying to get a soft key here that allows us to create or map a drive. So first step is when you first come in in this base screen, you have to put the customer or the user level password in. So go to passwords, set passwords, and type in customer in all caps. So once I type in customer, C-U-S-T-O-M-E-R, right? Standard customer in full caps, and I say, okay, you're gonna see it puts me to the user level. Now this process is going to be the same whether you're running create or run. Uh, in create, I could go to the full manufacturer level password. In run, I am limited to the highest level of access, which is user. But once I go to at least the user level, now when I go to HMI, you're going to see I got a whole bunch of new buttons, but most importantly, I get the logical drives button. And this button is what allows me to now create a soft key. So what you have across the top of the screen is these are the soft key buttons that are available when you go to Program Manager. So by simply highlighting an available button, and an available button would not have text on it, so whether it's say reserved or some other name, those are used buttons. So pick one of your open buttons and now select the Change Vertical Soft Key. Once you pick Change, you'll notice I can now access the type that goes blue. So the type of share we're going to want to set up is my network windows sharing type or mapping folder type. Now, what am I going to share? So if I would go to Explore, Windows Explorer for argument's sake, right? So I'm going to launch Windows Explorer. It's going to pop up on my screen. I had created on my PC a folder called Shared Program. The path on mine happened to be sitting in my D drive. I have two hard drives on my PC. It doesn't matter where you put it. So step one, you're going to have to create a folder somewhere or use an existing folder that you're gonna share and you have to give it full share permissions. So if you right click on the folder and you go to properties, I wanna make sure in properties, I go to sharing, I go to advanced sharing, 
Now, there are a couple things I want to do at this point when I go to advanced sharing. I want to make sure that I'm going to share the folder. So check this box. I also want to go to want to go to permissions and I want to give it full control. Right. So in this case, anyone could access this folder. You know, it is it is being just handled here locally. So I'm going to give full access to this this folder for everybody. So effectively, I'm opening uh, opening up the rights to this folder. So once you've done that, now I can close the folder, and now I'm going to fill out a few pieces of information. So what you need to know, and I, I like to create a little cheat sheet. Um, I'm going to need to know my computer name. So this is going to be unique to your PC. So my PC name is this MD name. You'll have to figure out what your PC name is. You can go to the control panel or go to settings to look for the name uh, for argument's sake. If I came in here and went to, I think it's under accounts, da -da -da. sign in options maybe, da -da -da. My info. that's my, my other login, this is important too. Um, I always, you know what, I always go to control panel. You thought I'd have pre-found this before I started the video, but of course not. Um, do, 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 go to system. There's your device name. So that's how I usually find it. Uh, but you are going to need to know the PC name. So you drop in the PC name. You're going to need to give it a share name. So that's the name of the file. So my folder was called shared programs. Um, when I created it, you want to be case sensitive. I used an uppercase for S, an uppercase for P, and there was no spaces. So we're going to put the exact name of the file name. But by giving it the shared folder name, I don't have to give it a path. So the only other things I have to do is give it my, my login credentials. So this would be my username, whatever your username is, um, that I showed earlier in that other screen, if you're not exactly sure what your login username is, and you'll need to have a password. Now, if your PC is currently set up where you can just boot right in and there's no login and password, you will have to give it those two pieces of component or information. Um, and then the last thing I like to do is name the button. So here, I'm going to call it shared programs. I am adding a space and you'll see why. So by adding the space, it makes the name kind of go over top of itself. If I didn't have a space here, just to show you real quick, then you see how kind of, you know, the name starts to bunch up together. So I like to give it a little space. So this has nothing to do with the actual name of the file. This is just the name of the button. But by giving it your computer name, the file name or the folder name of what you're sharing, your login credentials and a name, now you say, okay, and if you've shared it properly, the system should find that folder. So if everything's good, it's gonna come back with drive setup. Now, when I go to program manager, I now get a new button here, shared programs, and I can move programs in and out of my virtual machine. This will stay with this VCP file. Um, you will have to recreate this step for every machine you have in your library. Good, so now it's your turn. See if you can implement it and reach out to us if you have any problems. All right, have a great day.